Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna show you how to use a free video editor from Adobe called Adobe Premiere Rush. Now, Adobe has another video editing platform called Adobe Premiere Pro. That's the pro paid version of Adobe Premiere. And that's the one I use every single day. But Adobe Premiere Rush is a great, easy way to get started with editing because Premiere Pro is pretty advanced, but I will link to a tutorial to Premiere Pro if you just come on and compare and maybe you wanna get started with that instead of Premiere Rush. Now, they do have a, a version for mobile phones, for Android and iPhones and iPads too. And I did cover that in the previous video. So I'll put that in the link below. Basically with Adobe Premiere Rush, you could use your phone to edit and you could jump on your computer and edit on the exact same project. They sync with Adobe Creative Cloud. And I'll put a link below in the description where you could just go ahead and press get started. Now they do have a paid version of Adobe Rush 2 that basically has some of the limitations taken off of it that the free one has. And I believe that's about $9.99 a month. But in the link in the description, if you press get started now, it basically has you download this thing called Adobe Creative Cloud, which lets you download Adobe Rush, Premiere Rush from here. So I just went to the video tab once I installed this application on my computer and I downloaded it from here and you could open it. But basically Adobe has a ton of different apps. So if I went to the all apps, they have Photoshop, Adobe Premiere Pro and all kinds of different applications. And I have the subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud. So I have all this for one bundle price. But let me jump here to the computer so I could show you a very step-by-step -step way for using Adobe Premiere Rush if you're a beginner to editing. When you install Adobe Premiere Rush, this is your homepage where you could start a new project. That's what we're going to do. This other project that I edited, I did on my phone on the previous tutorial. So that's why this shows up here. You might not see anything in your case, but they do sync up. So I could edit this here or on my phone. I'm going to create a new project. That's the very first thing we need to do. And right here it says project title. So you could title your project over here so you could remember it next time. And you could then access different things on your computer. I transferred from my phone to my desktop on the computer some things that I captured on my iPhone. So these are the clips that I captured on my iPhone, which I also used in the previous video. And I'm going to select all these different clips that I want to use in my project. I'm going to select every single one that you see over here. You could also press Command or Control A to select everything at once. I just basically organized everything into a folder and sync with Creative Cloud. I wanna make sure this is checked on because maybe I wanna edit this on my computer or on my phone later. So I'm gonna press Create right here. And here we are inside of Adobe Rush after importing our video. So you could work with video, you could work with music, photos, and so on. Now, the next thing after importing my video that I usually teach is changing the aspect ratio. Let me just click this to show you what this means. By default, if I film the videos in 16 by nine, it creates a 16 by nine, what's called a sequence over here. Basically, it means this is the shape of your video, 16 by nine. And that's basically HD format. That is good for YouTube and television and things like that. But sometimes you may want to create something for like TikTok or YouTube Shorts, and then you want to change your aspect ratio to this kind of shape, right? More vertical. Maybe for Instagram, you want this shape or the square shape. It just depends on what you're going to do with this video. I'm going to go to YouTube, so that's 16 by 9. But you should understand these different four formats. These two are for Facebook and Instagram. This is for TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts. This is for regular YouTube and pretty much movies and things like you see on TV. After you choose your aspect ratio, let me kind of give you an overview of what you're looking at. Right on top over here, this is your preview window of your entire edited project. So I could always press play. Let me actually put this on mute so it doesn't talk over me. But let me press play. And this is basically going to play everything that is down here. So you see this blue line that is moving, this is your time indicator. It basically shows you where you are within your edits. You could always press spacebar to pause too. So pause and play is spacebar, comes in really, really handy. This one just moves you one frame at a time forward and this one moves you to the next edit point. Your edit point is basically where each one of your clip ends and a new clip starts. Okay, so this is your preview window. 
you'll use it all the time. Down here, you have what's called a timeline or sometimes called a sequence. So that's basically just all your different clips here laid out one after another. So the first one I imported all the way to the last one that I imported. And then you have some tools here on the right side that we'll talk about as we go through our editing and you have some here on the left side as well. But the very first thing we typically wanna do is we want to reorder how our clips are laid out in this timeline, right? So this video just started with this clip, but maybe this is just not the right clip to start with, so maybe we wanna change that. In order to reorder clips, you just have to click on one, grab it, and bring it back here. So now my first clip is this clip instead. If you wanted this one to be the first one, you just drag it and bring it over here. So reordering clips is the easiest thing there is, right? You just literally grab a clip, put it between any other two clips or the beginning or the end of your video. So I always recommend that you tell your story by rearranging your clips and then we're gonna actually trim or cut down each one of the clips. If for some reason you forgot to bring something, you could always press the plus sign and add your media. Media was the video clip we brought over, but if you wanted to bring other graphics, audio, and voiceover, you could do that from this plus sign over here. After we reorder all our clips and we have all the ones we wanna use imported into this project, we want to trim our clips. So let me go back in the very beginning of this project and I'm gonna press the plus sign on my keyboard just to make this bigger so you can see a better preview. So if I just go over here in the very beginning and press spacebar, this is where this starts, but this is all out of focus, right? So maybe I wanna start right here and to trim basically, to basically start right here, I just have to grab the end or the beginning here in this case and bring it all the way and it will snap to this line right here and let go. And just like that, my video project now starts here. If I press spacebar to preview, it starts here. I tilt it up. Maybe I'm gonna just right where I tilt it up here and this clip here. There we go. So just by doing that, we trim the beginning and end of this clip. Then it goes to this clip, but in this case, maybe we don't wanna use this one. So you could select the clip and press delete. So now we go from this clip to this clip. Again, it doesn't make sense. This is the outside, so it should be in the beginning. I'm gonna grab it, put it in the beginning and press play. This is good. There we go. I'm gonna pause it here with the space bar and trim the first clip. Perfect. Now I go from here to my next clip walking inside of the shed and walking up to that. And I'll trim this back as well. Okay, so that's what you do after you get the order of your clips right. You go and trim each one. So this is a duplicate again, I'll delete that. So then I'll go from here to here. Now, sometimes trimming doesn't really do what you need it to because maybe you don't wanna cut out the end or the beginning. Maybe you wanna cut something in the middle of a clip. That's where splitting a clip comes into play. And that's the scissors icon right over here. That splits your clip into two clips. So if I select this, wherever this blue line is, I get a new cut point right here. You see this cut point? So now I could trim this clip or I could trim the previous clip. It made me two different clips from the same one. So if I wanted to just cut out this little portion right here, I could split it again and I could cut this and then I could maybe move the end of this and put it maybe somewhere else, maybe over here. So we order clips, trim the beginning and end of the clips, and then sometimes split clips if you wanna take out a middle part of a clip or move a middle part of it somewhere else. I'm gonna delete this little one right now. Now that's going to be the bulk of your storytelling. So I recommend you make those edits, press play, preview to make sure everything looks right, go through your whole project, and then you could come over here at any time and see your entire duration. Two minutes and 50 seconds is how long my video is. So if I need to make it shorter, I, I would just cut some more out of this. And you see, as you make cuts, it will change over here. Or if you make any trims, it will change the duration. And this shows you exactly where you are within your project. All the timers are over here too. Another useful icon is this one right here it will bring you into full screen. So if you wanted to preview something in full screen, that's the way to do that. And you could always come out of full screen by pressing the same one. Now, the bulk of your editing is going to take place using those options. But next, we may want to add some effects and transitions. 
So let's go ahead and look over here on this tab because your graphics, effects, and transitions and filters are all over here. So let's start with a very common one called effects. I'm gonna click this. It's gonna open this whole effects panel. Transitions, if you're not familiar, is what happens when one clip ends and another clip begins. So at the end of this clip, this clip starts. Actually, let me go a little bit further so it's a little more obvious. At the end of this clip, this clip starts, right? But sometimes you may want to add a transition between, right now, this is called a cut. That's just basically there's no transition. Cuts from one to another. A transition could be like a dissolve. You see, I just clicked it and he applied it. It's this gray box. This is a dissolve, okay? It's pretty cool. Let me go ahead and delete dissolve, very commonly used, but you have other ones too. You could do a wipe, for example. That's useful as well. I'll delete that. So you could play around with these. The most common are dissolve and maybe fade to black or fade to white, which are these two options. And you could change how long this is. You see it's making it longer if you look down here. So if you want a long dip to black, you could change the duration of it over here all the way to a three second dip to black, okay? Besides transitions, you also have filters. That's under this color tab. I could go over here and I could apply all kinds of filters to the clip. So if I wanted to change the kind of the color of this, I could choose something like this, right? And you see how it's applying it and you could see if it looks good or bad on any clip that you apply this to. So I could go over here, apply one of these. By the way, anytime you do something that you don't want to do, you could undo that. Go to edit and then there's your undo and there's the keyboard shortcut for undo and redo is over here. Those come in really, really handy. So I recommend you learn the keyboard shortcut command or control Z for undoing. After you add effects and transitions, another very useful one here is uh, adding graphics or text graphics. So you could click this icon, add graphic, and then it's gonna give you all kinds of different graphics like titles, there's transitions, there's overlays. You could add any one of these. So if you wanted a title in the beginning of this video, let me go back in the beginning. I'll bring this right here, maybe transition with title and put it right on top. Okay, it's gonna load that motion graphics and let me go back in the beginning and watch how this plays. Okay, that's a great title. So I could go ahead and change what this says. I'm gonna go ahead and select all that, press delete and type my own text. And there is a bunch of different settings here, right? I could change the font size, the font style. Maybe I don't like the color. I could go ahead and make this blue. Okay, so you have all kinds of different options over here. Some of these are just plain old text right here, or you could press more to see more, and you could go ahead and check out the different options they have under these tabs as well. That's graphics and text. Now I'm showing you in the order of how you should actually pursue your editing. And once I get it to where I want, I typically bring in music at this point or record voiceover at this point as well. So that's the audio tab here. So let's go over to the audio tab and you could change the clip volume. That's just whatever the volume this clip has. So if you're talking, that's the volume. In this case, it's just what the phone recorded. So I don't wanna hear that. So I'm gonna either lower it or mute that clip. Now you have to do this per individual clips if you wanted to do that option. You can always right click on clips though and separate the audio track so you get it this way. So if you wanted to make uh, adjustments to it and see it kind of separate like this, this is one way to do it. Now what about music? Well, if I press browse right here, I have all kinds of royalty free music here that I could choose. These are soundtracks and you also have sound effects as well. But if I wanna add a song here, I could select it, press add, and it's gonna add it to its own track down here. So you see these individual things that you see, this is a video track, this is an audio track, that is the noise of this clip, right? The voice that goes with this clip, and this is the music track. So I'm gonna grab it and start in the very beginning of this project here. And let me press play. Okay, so you get the idea of how this works and you could click this Go to the audio tab and if you wanted to lower the volume, you could go ahead and do that as well. So it becomes more of a background song instead. Now there are a bunch of more advanced things that I'm not covering, but there's a speed effect here where you could go ahead and select the clip and speed it up. Okay, so that's if you go over 100%, it's gonna make it go faster. If you go under, it's gonna make it more slow motion. So play around with that. 
you have a transform, right? So you could actually move things within your frame left or right. You could do rotations. You could change the opacity. Ton of options here that are a little bit more advanced. And I typically don't teach that for beginners, but they are available to you over here. But let's say you're done with this project. Okay, what do we do when we're done with a project? We need to share it. So let's go to the share tab. And this is called exporting. In video editing, it's called exporting when you save this to be shared somewhere else. So here you would name your file and then you would go ahead and decide where you want to go with it. Right now it's saving to your computer. You could directly go to YouTube here if you wanted to, right? You could sign in there and other platforms as well. I always recommend you save it to your computer and then use those platforms individually outside of using Adobe Premiere Rush for posting. So let's look at some advanced settings. The preset is right now set to automatic, but if you knew exactly where you were going, in this case, I have a YouTube 1080p sequence. Okay, so I know what that is. So it saved me a lot of file size over here. And these are the rest of my settings. Now, this is because I know what I'm doing and I know this is what I shot this video at, but automatic can be okay. You see, but it's much, much bigger on the file size. So once you select all that and you name your sequence and where it's going to go, right now it's just going to my documents folder. So that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and press export on the very bottom of the page. And it's gonna take some time here to export the video depending on the speed of your computer and the length of your video. But you could see a little preview of where it's at within your project. So again, these are just iPhone clips that I got with my iPhone but you could import any kind of video clip from your computer or from any other type of camera. And here's that project. I'm just gonna mute it, but if I press spacebar to preview, here's the whole project and I could kind of review it here to make sure it's all there. It's two minutes and 47 seconds that I just edited in this video. And that's your crash course in using Adobe Premiere Rush on your computer. Again, you could now take the same project and use your phone to make adjustments to it and export it from there as well. So I hope you found this useful. Make sure you check out all the resources in the description if you wanna learn more about video editing, and I'll see you next time.